ці дні, коли майже весь християнський світ відзначує Воскресіння Господнє, в цей важкий час, коли кожен день приносить новини про нові знущання над нашим народом, тяжко нам собі уявити святкування. Щоб якось допомогти нам з'ясувати ці протилежні почуття, ми запросили до Великоднього слова колишнього єпископа Бриптійської Колумбії Кена Новаківського, а тепер екзарха Української греко-католицької церкви в Лондоні. Цей сюжет презентований Медійною радою Світового конгресу українців. Дорогі глядачі, вітаємо вас на українській телемережі «Контакт». Якраз тепер маємо надзвичайно велику приємність і привілей – поговорити із нашим канадським єпископом Володикою Кеном Новаківським, який перейшов тепер до Лондону в Англії, представляє Українську католицьку церкву святої родини в у Лондоні. Bishop Bishop Ken Novakowski, welcome to contact again. We can't we can't let go of you. And uh, we welcome you to our uh, our Easter show, and we we welcome you uh, with Slava Isusu Christu, and conceivably also Christos Voskres. Voisnu Voskres, Slava Noviki, Dorei Pan Yuri, and всіх ваші телеградіці. Хочу вас привітати від Лондон, від Великі Британія. І сподіваюся, що там все гаразд у Канаді. It's a real pleasure for me to be able to greet you, Pan Yuri, and all of those who are watching during this Easter time um, from here in in London. The Bishop, uh, Bishop Ken, uh, we're all we're all wanting to celebrate uh, the biggest Christian feast, Easter, and uh, how how would you suggest? Uh, Bishop, for us, how should we morally and uh, spiritually reconcile uh, this the, the concept of celebrating this great feast with the uh, unfathomable and uh, horrors that we're seeing uh, coming from uh, from Ukraine these days? Certainly, this is a very challenging time for all of us, whether it's Easter or whether we're celebrating a family occasion or just wanting to to go out i think one of the biggest challenges that we face as christians is we're wanting our world leaders to bring about peace in the world especially in our beloved ukraine and how do we celebrate easter when our hearts are breaking how can we reconcile that well for me i think I think the answer to all of that is if we want peace in the world, we have to start reconciling peace in our own homes, in our own families, on our street, in our communities, in our cities. If we want our leaders to be men and women of peace, they have to come from communities of peace. So at Easter time, certainly, yes, our greatest feast day, Jesus laid down his life for sinners. We're all sinners. We we admit that all of the time during our liturgies. We say, Lord, have mercy. A person who is without sin requires no mercy, but Jesus came for us. And so he also not only died for our sins, but he died and resurrected for our salvation. That has to be our guiding principle to judge our enemies. We can do that, but Jesus says to pray for the enemies. That's a difficult thing for us to do. I have a hard time with that myself, but Jesus has asked us to do that. Jesus, who laid down his life for us and resurrected, has asked us to pray for our enemies. A few weeks ago on the feast of the Annunciation, according to the Latin calendar, Pope Francis requested all Catholic bishops throughout the world, including our Ukrainian Greek Catholic bishops, along with our patriarch Sviatoslav, to consecrate Ukraine and Russia, the Ukrainian people and the Russian people, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I know that that was for us here in London, a very important step. 
it was a peaceful time. We were joined not only by Roman Catholics in our cathedral, but also members, bishops from the Church of England, from the Anglican Church. I think that, again, in celebrating this Easter time, we need to focus our prayers on salvation, our salvation. And I think that it's important for us as Christians to ensure that we are going to church and that we are celebrating this great feast day in our churches for those who cannot be in church because of the war and invasion in Ukraine. I think we can go to our churches and be happy that we have that opportunity to do so, to make sure that we take advantage that we, both here in the United Kingdom and especially in Canada, have the freedom to go to church, especially this year as we're coming out of this horrible pandemic, COVID, in order to reconcile ourselves to the horrors that we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis coming out of Ukraine, this is where we need to keep our faith solid, to believe in God, to unite our prayers with those who are suffering, to unite our prayers with those who are also rejoicing. I think that that is the way that we as Christians can respond to this dilemma, this horrible, horrible situation that Ukraine and the world indeed has found itself in. So the Prime Minister did come to our cathedral. The invasion was on Thursday, already on Sunday. Uh, after the invasion, the Prime Minister came to our cathedral towards the end of one of our liturgies, lit a candle and said some very um, powerful words condemning Vladimir Putin. He also said that Putin must lose and he must seem to have lost, that this cannot be a choice that that he has. After that, he had an opportunity to meet with our leaders behind closed doors. And he was very clear that he said, the press are not here. This is your opportunity to talk to me. I won't be doing the talking. I'll be doing the listening. I think that was very, very important, especially in those first few days that the Ukrainian community here in uh, the United Kingdom was able to, in such a candid uh, way, talk to uh, Prime Minister Johnson. Uh, immediately, there started to be legislation regarding how we could sponsor and bring over the displaced people who were fleeing their homeland. And I think that he really, and the government really understood that never be before in, in world history has there been such a displacement of people from their homes in such a short time. Certainly there have been displacements of millions of people during wartime, but not in a period of three or four weeks that over 10 million people have been displaced internally and now over 4 million people outside of Ukraine. So. We have had um, a lot of interesting conversations continuing with the government regarding of how sponsorships would develop some of the bureaucracy that needed to be eliminated and how people could respond. The Ukrainian community here, along with our interfaith partners, private sector and government have really come together to work to be able to welcome the displaced people that we're seeing. Later on, we received a request from Clarence House, the official residence of the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles and his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla, that they would like to come also to the cathedral to light a candle and to reflect on what was happening. And they asked me if I could organize perhaps about 45 or 50 people from our Ukrainian community, both from the U Ukrainian Orthodox Autocephalous Church here in the United Kingdom from uh, our various Ukrainian organizations and that they wanted to speak with these individuals, to talk with them, to understand what they were going to, through and to show solidarity. I think one of the real powerful ways that the Prince showed this solidarity uh, uh, in my greetings to him, I saw that uh, there was a need to say something about his visit 
And one of the things that I said was that certainly a fabulous photo opportunity for all of us with the prince and the duchess that could be shown throughout our Ukrainian community here in the United Kingdom, but also worldwide. But one of the things that I pointed out, apart from the important photo opportunity, was also the fact that the prince had brought with him five humanitarian aid organizations that he is the patron of, and that he, by bringing these organizations, encouraged people into action, into donations for these organizations, which already had um, boots on the ground, both in uh, the borderlands, especially Poland, and in Ukraine, to tangibly assist our sisters and brothers in Ukraine. I think one of the other remarkable things that he did uh, as uh, when he talked towards the end, he turned to everybody and said, Slavo Ukraini. And you can imagine the response. He then went into our cathedral. We had the meeting with, the, with our people in one of our cathedral uh, halls. And then he went into the cathedral and both he and the Duchess lit a candle and they also laid down um, sunflowers on the tetrapod, um, commemorating those who were fighting, those who were suffering from this invasion. We've had a lot of high profile visits, including um, uh, Canada's high commissioner to um, the United Kingdom, Ralph Goodale. And I have to put a little plug for him. He's also from Saskatchewan, as I am, and he brought that out. But he, he brought greetings from the government of Canada to our Ukrainian people in the United Kingdom. And he also emphasized what Canada was doing and would be doing as this invasion continued. So we've had a lot of support, a lot of um, support not only from government, not only from the royal family, but also, again, from other non-governmental organizations, as well as interfaith community leaders. Maybe we could switch over a little bit to how our community uh, is also reacting and how how is our community preparing together with all the government help that you're you're suggesting is happening for I think it's the 70 or maybe 100,000 uh, displaced by war persons coming into London now and and possibly have already arrived. So we know that al al already uh, over 1,200 people have arrived as displaced people on the refugee scheme. There's also been many more that have arrived in family reunification. The Ukrainian community here is represented by the Association of Ukrainians in Great Britain. And the Association of Ukrainians in Great Britain has its um, membership, its um, organizations throughout England and Scotland. And uh, we have teamed up with them as well as uh, other uh, Ukrainian organizations to provide both information for those who want to help and for those who need help. We've, uh, we are preparing here at our cathedral premise, a special welcome center for those that will be coming, but also for those who are hosting the uh, displaced people who may be wanting to understand more how they can help, what the specific needs are. We've pretty much identified the profile of the displaced people coming here to the United Kingdom as young women with one or two children whose husbands have stayed behind to defend Ukraine. So what are the particular needs that they might need apart from, of course, housing? Fortunately, the government here has uh, allowed that all people who are coming over on these schemes will have the automatic right to employment, to the National Health Service, to place their children in our school system. So that is a, a great help right away. But there are other things that they will be needing. For example, how to open up a bank account in a strange country, how to, they may need some legal advice. Um, they may need uh, webinars on how to um, fill out various government forms here. But what about people who are not fluent in English and have to fill out forms for everything here? We can be helping them. We can also be doing what's called signposting. If we don't want to duplicate 
already the great services that are being offered by other non-governmental organizations and uh, faith groups, uh, communities. So instead of trying to duplicate that, we want to be able to share that information with both our sponsors and also the displaced people that will be coming here, not only for London, but throughout the United Kingdom. Bishop Ken, um, absolutely wonderful uh, to be uh, hearing from you both on, on, the, uh, on the Christian uh, note of how we reconcile uh, Easter celebrations with the horrors that we're seeing from Ukraine. Uh, also very interesting to see the type of government support both symbolic and real that we're seeing from Great Britain and also the great example of how our Ukrainian community uh, in Great Britain uh, and all of us around the world are, are, are ready to provide uh, in support of the four million uh, people that are outside that are outside of Ukraine and Poland right now uh, and uh, and also for those uh, uh, if, suffering in Ukraine. But Yuri, if I can add one more thing. A few weeks ago, I was called by the mayor of Lviv, Pan Andriy Sadove, and uh, made a request of me um, that I, I agreed to try and do. I mean, it seemed a little bit perhaps over my pay grade, but he said that the bells of all of the churches in especially Lviv and in Western Ukraine were going to be ringing at 6 p.m. in the evenings. And they took that as an example from the bells of the Cathedral of St. Paul here in, in London, which during the Second World War, during the Blitz, when, uh, when uh, the bombs were falling on London, that the bells of St. Paul would ring to give people a sign of hope, a sign of that we are still here. And he asked me if I could uh, ask St. Paul's Cathedral, which is the Church of England, um, the, an Anglican cathedral, if they would ring the bells in solidarity with uh, the bells in Ukraine. And I told him I would try. I um, was able to contact the correct people at St. Paul's Cathedral. And indeed, they rang in solidarity with the bells in, in Ukraine. Also, the uh, Anglican Church Cathedral in Durham uh, here in, in uh, England were ringing as well. Before the ringing of the bells, there was a even song, their Vesper service, Vichirnya, that they invited me to participate in, to attend. And they had special prayers for Ukraine and for those defending Ukraine and those suffering in Ukraine. And then we uh, exited the cathedral to the peal of uh, these bells of St. Paul that rang for more than 15 minutes. It was uh, reported on BBC television and uh, on many other um, media outlets. And I think that is a way that people here in the United Kingdom wanted to ensure that the people in Ukraine knew that they were in solidarity with them, both in thought, prayer, and also actions. Re remarkable example of solidarity, global solidarity. Uh, Bishop Ken, as usual, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, for a wonderful conversation that I think will be inspiring for all of us. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Hai Bog Blosovit Vas i Hristos Voskras. Vo istino Voskras. Cei sujet prezentovani medijnoju radiju Svitovogo kongresu Ukrajinsiv.